Hi everybody, uh, this is the back side of the bridge, the side I'm not going to, to weather. I've already done the other side. Again, I'm following uh, Luke Towen's methods. Um, now he has a deck girder bridge. He airbrushed it gray after he built it. Um, I'm going to leave this one black. Uh, I spray painted it black. The bridges in Chillicothe, Ohio that I'm familiar with over the side of the river that the being owned, both of them were black. Um, so I can't, you know, one of them actually fell into the river after it was condemned and then they came and tore the rest of it down. The other one is still in use uh, a couple times a day. So I've already done the other side. Now Luke and his method, he used a sponge to dab dark rust on in the areas that were, you know, tend to be rusty. So I asked my wife, do you have any sponges? She said, yeah, you can have them. Well, she said I can have them because they're basically crap. <laughs> they're very old. It's not a technique that she uses. Um, so they just don't really work. I tried it. You can see where, you know, I put paint on the piece of paper and I dabbed the sponge in it and then I dabbed it off to get it dry. But uh, this is an end scale bridge. So obviously the girders and everything are much smaller, harder to get into. Uh, but my fingers aren't, you know, aren't any smaller. Uh, so I ended up using a brush for most of it. Um, after I was done with the brush, I went back and technique he talks about using, uh, he has this light brush. Now he doesn't use the same paints as I do. I like this mission model stuff. Um, light transparent rust. And he put it over the dark rust. And I did that too. To be honest, I think I got a little carried away. Uh, so I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to show you what it looks like. I had to get a little bit more light on it so you could see it. Uh, but you can see where the I dabbed the, I stippled the light transparent rust on. And then I used a brush because I had to get back in there in that structure. And I just wasn't really that happy with it. I don't think it looks good. So what I did was I took some weathering powders. Some uh, Tamiya weathering powder. And I used the soot. And I did this end. And it looks a whole lot better. It really toned down that light rust quite a bit on the roof. This is the end that I did. This is the end that I haven't done yet. So I'm going to do the whole bridge that way. But there is a problem with using uh, weathering powders. And I'll, I'll show you on the other bridge what I'm talking about. Okay, so I did this bridge exactly the same. I used the dark rust and I stippled on the light rust. Didn't really like how it looked, so I did the weathering powders on the whole thing. What I found with the weathering powders, though, is when you, a lot of times when you shoot it with dull coat to sort of fix the powders in place, the powder just like it, it just goes away and you end up with like a red looking bridge and you have to do it again. You have to put them on really heavy, so I'm going to do it again. I don't like how that red tint to it. I want it to be black with a little bit of red, not the whole thing looking red like that. So I'm going to do it again and hit it with dull coat. And I'm going to do the other bridge uh, the same way. I'm just using this bridge to illustrate because it doesn't make sense for me to do the bridge separately. I'm just learning on the big bridge and then applying what I learned on this bridge. All right, so this is the big bridge. You can see how red that is right there. So I'm going to now, I'm going to put the weathering powder over it and show you what that looks like. Okay, I haven't moved. All I have done is taken the brush and put black weathering powder over that same thing. It really ties it together, really makes it look a lot better. So I like it much, much better. Problem is, is when I hit it with dull coat, a lot of times that that weathering powder just sort of goes away and ends up looking red again. So I'm going to hit it with dull coat and then I'll show you what it looks like when the dull coat dries. Here's what it looks like after I spray it with dull coat. Now I was really focused on spraying very, very light coats. So it didn't do as bad as I've experienced in the past. Maybe I was putting dull coat on too thick. And, uh, I don't know, maybe floating <laughs> the powder off or whatever. This time I really focused on not putting 
a lot of dull coat on. So I'm encouraged by that. Um, so I'm going to keep working on the bridge. Um, you know, I think I'm just about done, just about happy with it. Uh, but this end, I think, still needs a little bit of work. So I'm working on the uh, Walther's bridge abutment kit um, today. And the reason why I'm showing you this right here is, you remember uh, yesterday, this is where I was putting the weathering powders on my bridge. Um, so another tip, <laughs> if you don't want your hands to look like this um, when you're not even working on weathering powders, uh, wipe your workbench off or put a piece of paper towel down before you do it so your workbench doesn't get like this. I've got another tip. Everything I screwed up, I'm trying to keep you guys from doing the same thing to me. You know, I'm using this uh, Plastruck uh, glue, which is really good stuff, but I'm not used to being how thin it is. In the past, I, you know, my big G scale stuff, I don't use this. I use like epoxy. Uh, for the buildings, I use that E6000. So I don't have that much experience with this. Um, when I built models as a kid, I'd use like the old, you know, testers glue like in a tube. <laughs> you know, I don't even know if they make that stuff anymore. So I've got this jig. That, uh, it's a magnetic jig. Got it from Micromark. Uh, really like it. It's got these magnets that you can, you know, hold stuff in place with. Um, so that's what I should have used when I built the original small bridge that I said was all, you know, cattywampus. I should have had this with me, and I didn't have it. So anyhow, I put the, and like this, held it in place, and I applied glue to the, to the back side. Well, this one I've done okay. Um, can't see a lot of glue on it, and I decided I would go ahead and reinforce it, because that's just a butt joint. But the first one I did, I put it in there like that, and I put glue and didn't realize how much that stuff would wick, and man, it wicked through and <laughs> really ate it up. That's going to be okay, because I'm going to paint it, and who knows, that part might even be underneath the water, you know, for all I know. But anyhow, um, since these are butt joints, I just took a couple of pieces like that and glued it on. So for this one, and what I'll do for the other wing wall, I glued it in place. I put the brace uh, behind it. See if I can find my. Well, I'll just. Uh, okay. There we go. So I put the brace behind it like that, and then I just touched just a little bit of glue to that to get it in place. And then I glued the brace in, uh, and so I don't have that nasty looking uh, glue bleeding out on this one. So, another thing you can also see, because I didn't clean my workbench off and I would handle it, you know, I've almost already pre-weathered these because I <laughs> got black all of them. Uh, so I'm going to wash them with uh, soap and water, uh, and then I'm going to paint them up. Uh, I've got some Tamiya uh, primer, and I'm going to paint them up gray and do different things to make it look like. Another guy who's really good at concrete, uh, you know, I mean, the ones that... Um, Luke did look great, but another guy who's really good at concrete is, uh, is Boomer Dioramas. He had a big bridge on his at the end of his layout, and he just did a sort of tutorial on, on how to do that, too. Uh, there's a lot of good modelers out there. I mean, DJ Strange just did a adding a river to a um, creek or to a layout, and yeah, it looks really good. So, um, you know, I, I think Boomer Dioramas says uh, there's a lot of different methods to doing it, so. There's no right way or wrong way, probably. So, you know, I'm just sort of using a hodgepodge of things. But uh, for people who are really experts at it, uh, check out Boomer or check out, you know, Luke, Luke's videos, because they're probably better at it than I am. I guess I'll sort of show you real quick how I use this jig. So I've got, this part's already glued. Uh, that's the wing I need to glue. So I'm just going to touch just a little bit of glue up here just to hold it together. Then I'm going to take this magnet off and I'm going to close up the little bit of gap that I've got there and put the uh, uh, put this on, on the back. And it should be pretty strong. 
So this is another handy little tool that I got from uh, Micromark. Um, just a little square. And uh, so I'm using it to make sure that the, I don't know what you call that, top support is, is square. <laughs> so I'm got the glue setting up right now. So here's how the bridge fits on the abutments. Now this is a Walther's bridge and Walther's abutments. Uh, so I figured they'll work pretty well together. My original thought um, in the video he uses foam core to make the abutments and I thought eh, that's, I'll try that. I've got some foam core. Again got it from my wife. Um, and I thought that uh, I can do that. I thought well, I'll just use the Walther's abutments as a pattern. The problem is so I'm going to get the other bridge is the other bridge is obviously much narrower and so if I used this button up here let's see if I can get it on there one handed that would look kind of funny having a button that, that wide for a bridge that narrow um, so I'm going to still make the foam core abutments, but I'm just going to um, basically scratch build them. <laughs> I'm not going to use this as a pattern. Uh, so I think I also think that I'm going to, actually now that I'm to this point, now that I have the bridge and the abutments done, if I can do this again. Okay. So I'm going to play around with it. I'll get it right. I'm thinking about angling the bridge a little bit for uh, visual interest. Rather than just being 90 degrees. Uh, I sort of wish I made this a little bigger now. Uh, this bridge is so daggone big. Uh, but again, it's just a scenery concept thing. Uh, so I'll, uh, you know, if I could have made it maybe six inches deeper and a uh, foot longer, of course, that'd be more of a problem to keep somewhere too so be in the way a lot more so um who knows maybe after i get it done i'll i'll sc i'll scrap it and sell the bridge to somebody or whatever or i'll just put the bridge away and use it on another layout someday so that's where i'm at right now uh, so i'm going to make the other bridge abutments while i'm thinking about it uh, i'm going to then i can start stacking foam up here and figure out what where my river is going to go so here are the bridge abutments after I got done with them. I sort of followed most of his, you know, uh, techniques. I mean, I dabbed different colored gray on there. I didn't have as many different colors as he had. Uh, then I used some weathering powders, added some streaks. Uh, I didn't have any yellow or red like he did. Uh, sort of felt like the streaks were too much, so I likely misted the original gray over it again um, when I was done. So now that I've got this done, I can uh, put the bridge on it. I can uh, start mapping out the creek or river. So this is what I used on the bridge abutments. Again, I used my base coat was the light gray on the left. Then I used the neutral gray and the other gray, the darker gray. I uh, just sprayed it on a, you know, piece of paper and dabbed the uh, dabbed it on I did use the one of my wife's brushes for that I did uh, putty the seams between the two there's the Tamiya weathering master and I used that pencil to sort of draw some cracks in which aren't vi real visible but you know that's all the tools that I use for this abutment so this is basically what I'm thinking of uh, the angle uh, so I'm going to uh, mark this on the plywood, and but that'll make a, a separate video when I start putting the foam on and do all that. Uh, I am going to, this is Saturday, I am going to run some operations tonight on my layout. I haven't done that in a while, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do an operating video, and uh, I'll post that tomorrow. But I'll go ahead and post this one uh, today about uh, this part of the bridge diorama. Everybody stay safe.